Hi everyone, hope you guys are all doing well. I'm just going to do a follow-up video that's been a little bit overdue by this point, and it's just going to be a follow-up to the nickel version that I did of this video. Um, we're going to talk about Gresham's Law and just the simplicity of coin roll hunting as it applied to Canadian pennies. And I have four generations of Canadian pennies here. Of course, uh, if you don't know, uh, Canada got rid of the Canadian penny after the year 2013. Uh, so uh, we do have it right up until the end when they were producing the steel penny. But just to start, and I went into Gresham's Law uh, quite a bit in the previous nickel video. What I'll do is I'll put a link to that video uh, just on screen and also down in the description below. If you want to take a look at that video, uh, it might be helpful just to get a quick understanding of what Gresham's Law is. But basically what Gresham's Law is, is it's just the, uh, the theory that bad money drives out good. And all that means, if we were to apply it to the Canadian pennies here, uh, the bad money being the year 2000 to 2013, and we'll talk a little bit about why it's uh, bad in a few seconds here. But that's the bad money, and what it's going to do is drive out the good money, which is our previous years here. And by drive out, what it just means is uh, you're going to hoard the good, uh, the good coins and then spend the bad money. Um, but maybe what I'll do is just get into the different generations that we have. Uh, these are four different versions of the Canadian penny, uh, different in their metal composition and also too in their weight. I'll start with the 1942 to 1979 Canadian penny. Uh, those pennies weighed 3.24 grams and they had a copper percentage of 98%. The next year that we have is 1980 to 1981. Those ones were 98% copper, but uh, they were slightly, they had a, a slightly less weight. Um, they were 2.8 grams. And then the same thing for the 1982 to 1996 generation. Those were also 98% copper. However, their mass was uh, slightly less, again, even from the previous generation. These ones weighed 2.5 grams. And then for the year 2000 to 2013, uh, those ones, they stopped uh, being made out of uh, copper, or at least uh, the majority of copper. They were actually not uh, the majority of copper in 1997 to 1999 as well. But just for this video, I'm including just the, the last generation there. The 2000 to 2013, and I guess technically it's, it's not really 2013. It's, the last year was 2012, I believe. But those ones, those were made out of 94% steel, 1.5% nickel, and then they had a copper plating of 4.5%. So that's basically what we're looking at here. And what I'm going to do is just uh, demonstrate um, how much each of the, the changes, how much those uh, increased or decreased, um, just in relation to their metal value. And then also to, just as I did in the previous video, just look at how the change in composition and the change in weight uh, affected uh, their overall value in comparison to their one cent face value. But let's get started here and I should just also mention the numbers are in relation to the copper price uh, a couple of weeks ago when I put these numbers together. However the copper price was 2.66 pounds back then and right now I believe it's uh, 2 Point, I think it's 2.3 um, dollars per pound, so fairly close and it shouldn't make too much of a difference. But let's jump right into it here. First of all, we'll just set our first number down, and we have a 16.4% increase. So the earlier version, the 1942 to 1979, they were 16.4% more valuable uh, when we take their, their metal value than the uh, 1980 to 1981 copper pennies. So not a huge difference there. Again, the, the metal composition didn't change. It was only the weight that changed between these, these years. And same thing with the 1980 and 81, and then the next generation of 1982 to 1996. The 1980 and 1981 copper pennies were 11.8% more valuable in their metal content than the, uh, the 1982 to 1996 coins. 
But if we look at the difference to the next generation, and remember the year 2000 to 2013, those were made out of 94% steel. They only had a 1.5% or sorry, a 4.5% copper plating. And again, looking at the, the value of the previous generation, the 1982 to 1996 copper pennies were 414.29% more valuable than the year 2000 to 2013. And again, that's just because their uh, metal composition was copper rather than steel. So overall, what we have from our first generation here, from 1942 to 1979, all the way over to the 2000 to 2013 steel coins, the earlier version were 569.29% more valuable. So basically, again, I talked about this in the nickel version of this video, but all coin roll hunting is, is it breaks down just to this Gresham's Law Theory. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to be spending, and again, the general population doesn't think like this, and to be honest, uh, we didn't really um, think like this either. Um, it's not really a big consideration when you're spending a penny, but it does make sense if you're going to try to apply it to coin roll hunting. Again, why would you try to spend these more valuable coins here when they're 569.29% more valuable than these coins? Again, Gresham's Law tells us that you would rather spend these coins and then hoard these ones if at the end of the day they're all worth uh, one cent in their face value. Again, the government says that they're, uh, by law, all worth one cent, so it just makes sense that you're going to, no pun intended there, uh, that you're going to try to keep these and spend as many of these pennies here. So again, quite a bit, quite a big, uh, big jump there. Um, quite surprising, 569.29% uh, our earlier versions are that much more um, value in their metal content than the earlier steel pennies. Now also though, important for coin roll hunters, and if you're going to try to uh, see if coin roll hunting made sense, you want to try to, you want to try to apply those numbers to uh, what the relation is in comparison to their one cent face value. So what I'll do is I'll just start by looking at the year 2000 to 2013, the steel penny. The steel penny's metal content is 72% below its one, uh, one cent face value. So again, if we were looking at it for coin roll hunting purposes, then obviously it doesn't make sense to hoard those coins. You'd rather spend the penny at its one cent face value rather than try to keep it for its metal content, which is 72% lower than that one cent face value. And then just looking at our copper pennies here, even though the 1982 to 1996 copper pennies were the smallest mass-wise at 2.5 grams, these pennies right now, based on the current copper prices, which by the way are also quite low um, from their historical levels, um, or I guess not historically, but just in the last couple of years, they've been uh, a little bit higher. Right now they're only uh, $2.74 $2 per pound. But even these coins, uh, right now, they're 44% higher in their metal content than they are from the, the one cent face value. So again, for coin roll hunting, it would probably make sense, and it did in our uh, calculations when we were coin, coin roll hunting, uh, to keep the, this generation of coin rather than go out and spend it at one cent, uh, its face value. And then our next generation, 1980 to 1981, we're looking at another increase in its value. So with these coins here, they're 61% more valuable in their metal content than they are over and above their one cent face value. So same thing with the 1982 to 1996. Uh, it may make sense to try to hoard these coins for coin roll hunting purposes uh, just because their metal content is more valuable than their one cent face value. And then lastly, our uh, best generation here. Again, they were the largest from its mass at 3.24 grams uh, and also 98% copper. And these ones right now at the current copper prices are 87.4% over and above 
uh, the one cent face value. Uh, their metal content is 87.4% more valuable than the one cent face value. So again, uh, at the end of the day, it just we're just trying to look at Gresham's Law and just apply it to coin roll hunting. Uh, back in the day, again, uh, hundreds of years ago, uh, what leaders and, and kings would do is they would decrease the amount of gold in the currency, uh, or they would clip the edges and make the coins smaller so there would be less gold. And again, they would have the future coins, which were de debased and devalued. Uh, they would just by decree say that they would be worth the same, they had the same face value of the coins that had more gold in them. So again, Gresham's Law um, what people would do is they would hoard the, uh, the coins with more gold in them and then spend the lesser valued and the base coins. And that's all, that's how we thought of coin roll hunting as well. Uh, we're going to try to hoard the coins that are uh, more valuable in their metal content than their one cent face value and, and not keep the, the steel coins there, for example, uh, which have a lower metal content and metal value than their one cent face value. So I hope that you found this video enjoyable. Uh, we're getting a little bit long here, so I won't talk uh, too much longer here. I just want to thank everyone again, as always, for all of your great comments and your support. Uh, just let me know what you think about this video here down in the comments section below. Uh, if you could also give the video a like and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't, uh, that would also be greatly appreciated. But again, thank you so much for watching as always, everyone. I hope you guys are all having a great day and again a great end to the week here. It's Sunday as I'm filming. Uh, but that's it for this video here guys. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.